Lady Mary was quite the wonder of all her countries. Not only was she beautiful, not only was she graceful, not only was she wealthier than every other man, not only did she live in her great house with her seven strong brothers, but she could outride, she could outshoot, she could outhunt any of them. And so it was not terribly surprising that all her seven strong brothers wanted to get her married off as soon as badly possible. <laughs> but Lady Mary, oh, Lady Mary was having none of it, for she was famed for her reputation for boldness. And so she boldly said, Not badly likely. And she declared <laughs> she would not get married unless, unless, Unless they can find someone who can outride, outshoot, and outhunt me as well. And Lady Mary's portion was great, and many a young man tried, and some could outshoot her, and some could outride her, and one or two, but not many, could outhunt her. But none, oh, none, could do all three. <laughs> that is, until Mr. Renard came in. With his ready wit and his easy, easy wealth, he was in Lady Ma my dear, Lady Mary's very words. Oh, quite a charmer. And what was more, <laughs> he could outride, he could outshoot, he could outhunt her. I think you will find I have won. You want to play best of seven? Oh Lord! And so it was. The Lady Mary discovered herself before she had ever quite meant to. Bally engaged! And on her finger was an engagement ring, shaped in the shape of a cross, studded with emeralds and diamonds. Oh. And as she thought to herself, she suddenly realised what many a bride might realise. After all, what did she really, really know? about Renard. I don't even know where he goes in the evenings. And that was true, for each night he would ride off into the shadows and disappear. And Lady Mary decided that she would follow him and see where he goes. And she looked into the sky and amongst the clouds and amongst the rain she read, Be Boo. And she thought to herself, Why Abdo? So she decided, to follow Mr. Renard one night. But her wedding was close at hand, and what with, I think, tried on your dress. Oh, God! Oh, and God. your shift. Oh, Lord. And cakes oh, and who, preparations. Who cares? Someone was always, always oh. asking her questions. God. And so it was not until the very eve of her wedding that Lady Mary found the time to put on her own cloak <coughs> and to slip away following Mr. Renard into the forest. But you know, it was so strange, because Lady Mary soon realised... Oh, I've been hunting in this forest since I was six years old, but I don't recognise any of this part. And what was stranger yet was the light. Oh, it seems to be sort of perpetual twilight. It's not getting any darker or brighter, how peculiar. And what was strangest of them all? was Mr. Renard himself. Oh, he seems to be flickering in and out of existence like some sort of goat. How old? And how long Lady Mary rode off into the shadow and into the twilight, she could never quite remember. But in the end, she came to a high hedge with an oak door, and Renard, like a shadow, slipped in. And Lady Mary, riding up to it a few minutes later, came to that great old door and as she tied up her horse, she read over the top of the door. Be boo. And she thought to herself, Why, Abdo? And she went inside. <laughs> and suddenly, it was as if everything had changed. It was a wonderful, wonderful English garden, as of a great house on a perpetual summer's afternoon. Hooray! <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. I mean, there's, there's temples and topiary and, and peacocks and parasols and canals and I don't know what else. But Lady me. Mary went as fast as she could to the great house across the valley, a mile or more, 
and she went up the seven stairs to the great double doors. And over the double doors she read, Be bold, but not too bold. And she thought to herself, Why, oh, I am bold. And went inside. <laughs> and Lady Mary, used to wealth as she was, had never, 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 never seen the like. Good Lord, I mean, look at all this marble and, and gilding and, and chaisons and chandeliers all over the place. Good Lord, it's like a palace. And as from each, she went from room to room to room downstairs. Each was more splendid than the last. Good Lord. But you know, as Lady Mary went round, something, two things, started to really, really, really rattle her. First, there was something about the rooms. Well, it's more like a museum than a living house. There's nothing, nothing human. There's not a, a half-eaten sandwich or an old boot or a sock or anything. <laughs> oh. And what was stranger yet was a room that was missing. And that really started to rattle her. There's no kitchen. Where does the man eat? And at last she came back to the double cantilevered staircase. And she went up to the first room. And if she thought it was plush downstairs, it was nothing, like nothing, to this upstairs. Look at this bedroom. I don't believe it. There's acres of red velvet. And look at that bed. It's circular and you could sleep 12 in it. Good Lord. And look at all this gilding. Almost over the top, I think. Oops. <laughs> Broken a bit off. Hope you won't mind or notice. <laughs> And then Lady Mary went from room to room to room, all through the house. And each room was bare to the board. Well, it can't have many visitors, and they can't enjoy themselves if he does. That's not very hospitable. Oh. Until she came to that last long corridor. The long corridor with the double doors at the end. The long corridor with the box by those doors. Dun, 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 dun. Ah. <laughs> and as Lady Mary came up, she looked at the box and she realised... Oh! How macabre! It's in the shape of a coffin! And she opened it and inside she found... Bones! Hundreds of them! But they're smashed to bits so I can't tell what of. Oh! And then she turned and looked at the great double doors and over the great double doors she read... Be bold, but not too bold, lest your blood run cold. And she thought to herself, My blood runs pretty hot. And she opened the great double doors. <gasps> and there Lady Mary, bold as she was, took a step back. For she had found a kitchen with coppers and pans and a beautiful heart. But it was not then that made Lady Mary, bold as she was, take a step back. It was rather the row upon row of women dressed as brides, dead. <laughs> And on their fingers, there were two rings. What a, a red gold wedding ring. An engagement ring. Exactly the same as Lady Mary's. Oh, oh what a bounder. He must find him in job lots. <laughs> <laughs> and just then there was a slam of the door. And uh, Lady Mary was not quite alone. For so someone was sweeping up the stairs. It was Renard. And Renard was not alone, for he had another dead woman on his back, dressed as a bride. And as he came up, the woman, who was not as dead as Renard perhaps thought, reached out and clasped beside the box, the box that Lady Mary had hidden behind. And Renard, feeling that, said, ah, not quite dead yet, my dear. And he cut off the hand and went inside. And Lady Mary oh. could never quite remember what happened next. Poor Gil! As she ran around, grabbing whatever she could. As she snatched things, as she ran down the stairs. As she came at last through the garden to her horse. As she rode off into the night. The next thing she clearly remembered was, bang, 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 bang. Lady Mary, are you ever getting up? It is your wedding night. And oh. you must not more than you must get married. Lord, all right, all right. Keep your hair on. So Lady Mary put on her best frock and dressed as she could and then she packed one or two other things and she went down to the chapel and in the chapel, ah, oh, my dear, my dear, my dear, so pleased to see you. There was Renard and her seven strong brothers waiting and smiling. But Lady Mary came before them and said, Oh, wait a moment. Before we go any further, I'd like to tell you all about a most fascinating dream I had last night. And Lady Mary told them. Ah, I'd 
followed Mr. Renard to his house, and I came to a great country house with an enormous great lawn, and I went into the house, and I couldn't find the kitchen, except that it was upstairs, and when I did open it, there were row upon row of murdered birds, all with a toast cart. Ah. My dear, my dear, what folly it is to remember such dark fantasies. Many a bride has such dark forebodings before her wedding night, and discovers all is golden and bright. Let me finish, sir, because if it was a dream, then why were all the brides wearing two rings, one like the one I've got on my finger and the other one like the one that he's got in his hand, and then what's this? And Lady Mary held up what she had taken from the house, a severed hand. Ooh. And on the hand were two rings, one exactly the same ring as she had, the engagement ring. <laughs> And one ring, the wedding band of red, red gold. That was the match of the ring that Renard held. And there was silence throughout the chapel. Nobody moved a muscle except Lady Mary. And I blew out the place of rings with my blunderbuss. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> and so it was that Lady Mary escaped marriage that time. And from that moment on, she declared. And in the end, you know, she outlived them as well. Huzzah!